I was reading an article today about Jennifer Lawrence. And oh, yeah, old puffy cheeks. Old puffy cheeks, yeah. And the writer kept... <laughs> it's Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> but the writer kept uh, calling her J-Law. Mm. And it's, it's horrible. First of all, it doesn't make you sound like a serious journalist. But my big problem with it is that we already have a J-Law. Jude Law. Jude Law, exactly. You can't just be giving out his name. Should have called her Jay Rents. J. How would you abbreviate the Hunger Games? Hun game. Hun Hun game. That's <laughs> not Hun Games. <laughs> That's for you, Jay Rents. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. It's Christmas season, Craig, and here we are together in the basement. Did you like the way I decorated it? I can feel the joy. And even Ernesto's getting into the act. Ha, <laughs> ha. Ah, what a character. Yeah. Looks like it's time for some Christmas gambling. Yeah, three film Monty. On the last episode, Matt, you assigned me the task of choosing three Christmas and or family movies. So, I present to you the pieces. Oh, boy. It's mice. That's right. Christmas mice. We're going to actually use those to figure out what movie we're going to watch. Hot damn. All right. So what are the three movies? One is a children's cult classic. A second is a beloved family favorite. And the third is really weird, but I'm sure we'll like it. What's Christmas without Santa Claus and Bloodshed? And also ran from last Christmas's episode, we have Finland's Freak Fest Rare Exports. Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to watch that. I still haven't gotten around to it. You might have a chance tonight. Christmas bells go ding, ding, ding. As surely as trolleys go clang, clang, clang. You'll have yourself a merry little movie-going experience with Meet Me in St. Louis. And finally, children love Christmas almost as much as they love Dr. Seuss. So why not watch a Dr. Seuss movie this Christmas? You'd have to be a Grinch not to like The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. It is a children's cult classic. I didn't think those existed previously. <laughs> yeah. Children's cult classics are children's movies that people like to watch when they're older and stoned. Yellow will be Meet Me in St. Louis. Orange will be Rare Exports. And green will be Dr. T. Okay, actual shell game. All right, keep your eye on whichever one you prefer, because you might pick it. And choose one. That one. The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. Oh boy. And Rare Exports is shut out for another year. I, I guess so. Written by Ted Dr. Seuss Geisel. Geisel or Geisel? Geisel, Geisel. What difference does it make? He's the Dr. Seuss. T5KF's ODT was a massive flop when it was released in 1953. Oh no. In fact, at the premiere, people started walking out about 15 minutes into it. In high Seussian style, the good doctor called the movie a debaculous fiasco, and he never returned to Hollywood. And in fact, he never allowed another movie to be made of one of his books until after he died. Until the horror of Cat in the Hat. Uh, take your pick, pretty yeah. much. Yes. In 1958, uh, the movie was re-released under the far less outstanding title of Crazy Music. <laughs> Dr. T has become a massive cult classic. In fact, some people say that Sideshow Bob Terwilliker from The Simpsons... Whack! Oh. ...is named after the villain of this movie, Dr. Terwilliker, who also torments a young boy named Bart. So, uh, what do you think, Matt? You neglected to mention that this movie was remade by Robert Altman, The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T and the Women. <laughs> so it's Christmas. Uh, any gifts? Oh, actually, these were the gifts. That's why they're in the gift box. Oh, but okay. they are gifts for the cats. Oh, well, yes. hey, Ernesto. Here you go, buddy. He's not impressed. Not at all. So let's zoom and zip and zilch and zouch all the way over to the big leather couch for the weirdo masterpiece, The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. I'm going to be very disappointed if this guy doesn't have exactly 5,000 fingers, and I'm going to count. <laughs> Stanley Kramer. Oh. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of influence on uh, Judgment at Nuremberg from this movie, I think. <laughs> 
A young boy is chased through a nightmare landscape by men with nets. But don't worry, it's just a bad dream. But young Bart's waking life isn't much better because he's stuck at piano practice and Dr. Terwilliger is a taskmaster. <laughs> yeah, he's evil. Dr. Terwilliger is a very finicky, flourishy type fellow who wants Bart to practice, practice, practice. Dr. Terwilliger is the only enemy I've got. And Bart's mother, Mrs. Collins, insists that Bart practice piano too, which he hates. She sings a little song. About ten happy fingers. Ten little dancing maidens dancing oh so Don't play angry, kid. Also, Bart's father is dead. Something just fell down the stairs. <laughs> hey, kid, it's me, Stu. <laughs> There's a plumber, Mr. Zablodowski, who's doing some work in the kitchen. And Bart kind of takes a liking to him. Bart is so bored that he falls asleep again, and he's back in dreamland forced to play a giant piano at the whims of Dr. T. Ten little nightmares all in a row. They're all mine. Dr. Terwilliger has big plans to open an academy with 500 students. 5,000 little fingers. And they'll be mine. All mine. He's going to make them keep playing 24, 24 hours, hours a day. day. He's sort of like a mad scientist, but with pianos. But before he can open his academy, all of the sinks need to be installed. And that's where Mr. Zablodowski comes in. If all the sinks don't get installed, then the sink inspector won't allow the Dream Academy to open. <laughs> Dream Academy. It seems as though Dr. Twilliker has kidnapped and hypnotized Bart's mom. Your son will be picked up by a bus at 5 a.m. sharp. He will be beaten by 6 a.m. sharp. <laughs> and she's going to marry him. Bart escapes from his cell and gets chased by these kind of dumpy ass soldiers. Where's my suit squadron B? There's a Lorax down here that's giving us some trouble, sir. Dr. T has invested way too much time and effort into making a little boy practice the piano. <laughs> Bart eventually finds the plumber, Mr. Zabazewski. They have a little imaginary fishing trip. And then they sing a song about how important it is to have dreams. First it's there. Then nowhere. It's okay, don't cry. I know it's very beautiful. <laughs> it reminds me of my plumber. A little bit of choreography could spice this number yeah. up considerably. Bart convinces Mr. Zablodowski to just go and take a look. He'll see that Dr. Terwilliger is up to no good. They sneak up into the room. Insert laying pipe joke here. <laughs> but Dr. Terwilliger is not so easily fooled, no, no. He's gonna put the whammy on him. <laughs> Mr. Zabwodowski, he's no fool. He knows how to hypnotize, too. Terwilliger does piano-style hypnosis, and the plumber does plumbing-style hypnosis. It's like an old kung fu movie. They've each got their different styles. <laughs> But Dr. Terwilliger fools Mr. Zablodowski into thinking that he's a good guy. And wouldn't you like a cigar? And wouldn't you like some food? And wouldn't you like a drink? Schnapps, sake, schlivovitz, schweppes, tequila. The only children's movie ever to feature tequila. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't you like to sing a song about how nice the weather is? The weatherman's reporting that the weather's right for... Wait, shouldn't we be slumped in a chair? <laughs> Ah, ah, there, there we, we go. go. But then after he leaves, Terwilliger signs a disintegration order. He wants the plumber gone as soon as he's done with his work. Relations between Bart and the plumber go south. The plumber accuses Bart of being a liar and leaves him. You have no right to push and shove us little kids around. Now, I disagree with this. I would have agreed with you back when you were your age, but I love pushing kids around, and I <laughs> see it is my right. It's so easy. Yeah, I know. Hey, kid. Hey, Bart. Wham. <laughs> I don't like anybody that pushes anybody around. I only like to push sinks around. <laughs> I can't go against Dr. Terwilliger because that's how I make my money. How much are you being paid over time? 2,000 pistolas. 2,000 what? Three silver slowbacks make one golden crotch muck. Bart says, I'll pay you money. I'm gonna get you all the money you want! Crotch mooks, zablig digs, anything! So Bart sneaks up to Dr. T's room, and while Dr. T's sleeping, he steals the key from the metronome where he hides it. Gets exactly $30, the alarms go off, and Bart escapes. Down the longest fire pole you've ever seen, all the way down to the dungeon, 
where all the musicians that don't play pianos have been locked away. Every scene in this movie is stranger than the previous one. <laughs> There's a big, long dance routine in which they play every conceivable instrument. Like a big boa constrictor tuba, there's, uh, there's a, a guy whose job it is going to swing and hit a bell. Oh, and there's, and there's musical boxing gloves. And they're all green for some reason. I, that I don't get. Where's our sinks? Bart finds his way back out of the dungeon. Then the Siamese beards show up. These hipster facial hair trends are getting ridiculous. <laughs> no, don't cut it. They share a liver. Who eventually snips their beards, effectively murdering them. And Bart and Mr. Zablodowski are sent down to the dungeons. Second floor dungeon, jewelry department. Where do we have a vacancy? How about apartment 22J? Why is he listening to an iPod? There they're put into a cage. It doesn't smell so good in the dungeon. Zablodowski says, that's all right, I got this crazy air freshener that sucks in the smells. Bart says, wait a minute, what if we altered that formula and made it so it sucks in the sound? Then that'll make the piano not work. Well, we can just make one right here in the cage. Dream logic. I got a bunch of crap in my pockets. Let's just put that in a bucket and stir it with a big dinosaur bone and... They put it in a hearing aid they steal from a sleeping guard. Hey, I'm listening to the Smiths. I was happy in the haze of a drunken hour, but heaven knows I'm miserable now. Hey, all that crap turned into maple syrup. It works. In a movie full of implausible things, this is the least plausible. Mr. Zabladowski warns Barth. It might even be atomic. Atomic? If it starts smoking, you get away from it, but fast. Duck and cover. All the boys arrive at the academy. They're all sad. They all get their slingshots and their footballs taken away from them. And they all sit down at Dr. Terwilliger's big piano. My students are awaiting our date with destiny. He's like a skinny, swishy Boris Karloff. <laughs> Dr. Terwilliger decides it's time to get dressed. And oh, get dressed he does. In possibly the most elaborate getting dressed musical number ever committed to film. I want my leg of mutton sleeves, and in addition to those, I want my cutie chamois booties with the leopard skin bows. See my vest, see, see my, my vest, vest, made of real gorilla chest. That was the gayest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Officially. All of his 5,000 fingers are at the piano, all ready to play. But he doesn't know that Bart's got his fake potion. And all of the sound gets sucked up and mixed around. No one can play anything because Bart's fake-ass potion makes all the sound go away. And Dr. Terwilliger gets upset. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> Bart keeps doing it until Dr. T eventually collapses in disgust and failure. We don't need no piano education. But wait a minute, that potion is in fact atomic. Why wouldn't it be? Everybody runs for their lives, but they can't escape the blast radius. Which causes Bart to wake from his dream back at piano practice. It was all a dream, or was it? Because he and Mr. Zabodowski both have injured fingers from when they took their blood oath. That's right, they took a blood oath earlier. Forgot to mention that. Zabodowski's taking mom downtown, if you know what I mean. Finally, all the adults are out of the house, and Bart can finally say goodbye to piano playing, and hello to baseball in the street. The end. Just your basic story. Well, that was all 5,000 fingers of Dr. T, and I feel like I've been touched by each one. <laughs> Were they happy fingers? I'm not sure, but they touched me in my brain. This was a truly strange movie. I can see why those people walked out of it, because yeah. I don't think the typical mind of 1953 could take in this movie. Yeah, it's, it's that weird, and it's trippy, 
in an era that didn't know what trippy meant. That piano's crazy. I'm leaving. <laughs> Do you think this was an adequate cinematic translation of the work of Dr. Seuss? Yes. Like when he uh, climbs up that ladder, that endless ladder, and he's at the end and the spotlight goes on him. That's a beautiful shot. It really is. And yeah. it's something that you could only see in the pages of Dr. Seuss. Hands on the wall, pointing oh, hands. Yes, yes. I mean, we could point at a hundred different things. The thing that this movie has, more than any Dr. Seuss book that I can think of, is how it really gets into the mind of a child. Mm -hmm. What's the fears? It's like, oh, well, I lost one parent. What if I lost another? What if her choice for a second husband is someone I can't stand? What if I always had to play the piano? And of course, what if an atomic bomb went off? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> You know, these things grow to be these uh, larger-than-life conspiracies when a childhood imagination yeah. kind of grabs hold of them. The evil plotting of Dr. T, it's very nebulous on why he <laughs> right. wants to do this. You know, the World Bank will be mine. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing along those lines. Something I find odd about the movie, the artist discourages dreaming, while the working man encourages dreaming. Dream stuff. Well, that's uh, the opposite of how... It's usually portrayed. When he wants something to happen, it just happens. Yeah. When he wants a magical potion that makes sound go away, he just makes it. But that's a childhood thing, sure. too. If you play with kids, they're like, yeah, we're going to make a robot. And they're like, here's two sticks and a hammer. And, you know, right. and, and look, it's a robot. But uh, if you look at Shakespeare and Macbeth, there's the whole potion sequence. It's just a list of crap that's lying around the witch's cave. Right. And they toss it in and boom, there we made a potion. That was the one part of the movie where I thought like, okay, this part is pushing it too far. But thinking about it in retrospect, it really does make sense. You know, makes that part of the story more fun. Yeah. Rather than me, the Terwilligerian adult, <laughs> pointing at it and saying, that can't happen, yeah. not even in a dream. <laughs> How about... Hans Conrad. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. I, just how fearless of a production he puts on. I, He's like a big screen Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Well, and also that voice, you might have recognized the voice because he played Captain Hook in the Disney Peter Pan. He played oh. Snidely Whiplash in the uh, in Dudley Do-Right. And he also played Thorin Oakenshield in the Rankin-Bass Hobbit. Wow. So that guy got around with his grand voice. <laughs> and his rolling R's. There's a lot of this movie that just seemed like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Going under the doorway. Yeah. Looking back and there's the explosion. I'm glad that we watched a movie that is not a Christmas movie, but that definitely fits with the season. Gathering around with all the kids and watching this movie. Everybody just getting really weirded out. And then saying, good night, kids. Pleasant <laughs> dreams. <laughs> linka, 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 do. Happy fingers. And happy fingers to you. If you haven't seen The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T, do yourself a favor. You will find yourself in a waking nightmare that you don't want to leave. And for something a little less nightmarish, you can go to welcometothebasementshow.com. That is our website. You can read all kinds of things. You can visit our Hall of Fame. And there's a PayPal donation button. You can donate to help support this show. Tis the season for giving. Some of our viewers have done just that. Here are their names. Franklin, who writes, Hello, hello, it's five in the morning and I cannot stop laughing at your commentary. Please make a buttload more shows. One buttload coming up. Philip, Ophir, Aaron, Shane, Anders, who writes personally, the Bergman episode is my favorite. Keep on with the awesome variety in your movie picks and the stellar commentary. Love from Sweden. Hey. Yedaskade. How do you say it? Yedaskade. Yalg Elskade. Yalg Elskade. Yeah, Svenska. Andrew writes, for the Schlab rant, keep up the great work. Schlab stands for Shia LaBeouf. Just as J. Rents stands for Jennifer Lawrence. Craig uh, did a an epic rant about Mr. LaBeouf. It was his shining moment in this show. And Terry, who says, Your show rules, but let's have more Ernesto. Here it goes. Oh, there he is. Terry, that was for you. And now, it's time for Seen It! Seen It! Seen It is the part of the show where we read your comments, movies that you suggest for the show, where you go on the thing and you write and you say, hey, why don't you watch this movie? Well, these are movies that we've seen, so we can't watch them on the show. But we'll talk about them now. Michael Lalak says, have you ever seen High Fidelity? If not, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite movies ever, and I think you'll enjoy it too. Seen it. Seen it. That movie was a very life-changing movie for me because yeah. it got me back into music. 
I was listening to a lot of really shitty music in the mid nineties <laughs> and this movie came along right at the right time and it really made me want to go to the record store and just like delve back into music and not just listen to, you know, crummy Dave Matthews band albums. Dave Matthews band, he he's a very seductive sound that he has <laughs> with his violins and saxophones. I understand, well, I've been there too. I'm not a Dave Matthews hater, but I do cite Dave Matthews Band, When I Want an Example of Bland Music. <laughs> Justin Gillies on Facebook. Have you guys seen The Seventh Seal? I remember when I watched it a few years ago that after the movie I bawled my eyes out because I was so confused by the movie. It showed such darkness, but there were moments of such hope. Anywho, I love joining you guys in spirit on The Big Leather. Seen it. Your comment made me go back and re-watch The Seventh Seal, which I had not seen in about ten years, and I was shocked, Craig, shocked, at how little I remembered the movie. I just watched it again, too, and it's been over ten years, and I remember the beginning and the end. All the stuff in the middle I forgot. And that and it's, stuff's amazing. And it's all good stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's this tarot deck of characters wandering through this medieval landscape, trying to figure out the mysteries of life and death and the afterlife. And, and trying it, to run away from death. It really should be watched and thought about. 0001 Sika says, hey guys, I don't know if you've seen it, The Wings of Desire, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it. A very interesting and poetic Franco-German romantic fantasy movie taking place in Berlin during the Cold War. Seen it. Seen it. I get the feeling if I rewatched Wings of Desire, I, it would be the same situation as with The Seventh Seal. Don't remember a lot of it. Everyone should watch it like I watch it, rent it, start watching it, fall asleep, <laughs> watch it again the next night, stay awake for the whole thing. That first half an hour is so disjointed that there's really no following it at all. Vic Viper 301. Have you seen the Spanish version of the Bela Lugosi Dracula? The script is the same, but the actors and director's choices for shots make that version so much better. Seen it. Not seen it. The guy who plays Dracula in the Spanish version is no Bela Lugosi. But the rest of the ensemble is a lot better. I just love that in the early days of sound film that they would film an English version during the daytime and then a Spanish version after hours That's so they right. could mark it throughout the Americas. Hot Spanish Dracula nights. Yeah. And, and that only makes sense because any movie can be shown anywhere in the silent era. As soon as sound came along, they lost that whole audience. Kevin McMullen asks, I was wondering if you have seen Rain Man starring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. I think this is one of Cruz's best movies, and it is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, seen it. Definitely seen it. Definitely seen it. <laughs> yeah, I also love I, this movie. I know you really like Rain Man. You talk about it often. What's so special about it? It's a very believable character arc that Charlie Babbitt has to go through, going from being such a callous person to becoming such a caring person at the end of the movie. And Cruz, much as I denigrate him, he just knocks it out of the park. It's a perfect role for him and not that many people could be seen past Hoffman's performance and yet there's a lot of times when you can still see Cruz and that shows the power of Tom Cruise right there hmm. so that was seen it and that's our show our next episode is going to be our end of the year wrap up we're going to take a little stroll down memory lane but there's going to be a few surprises along the way as well and, of course, we're going to announce our Hall of Fame inductees for 2013. December gets a little dicey down here in the basement, what with all the traveling and holiday plans, so I'm not positive when that episode is going to come out. It might even come out in January. But when we have a concrete release date for that episode, you will see it here. And you will see it on our Facebook page if you want to check that. We hope you enjoyed this holiday journey that we took into the weird world of a child's dreams and that you will join us again soon. Good night. Ho, ho, ho! Fabulous weather for bipping and beeping. Well, snipping and snuffing and snooping and sneeping. Well, now it's not weather for schnapping. Sneeping? Sneeping, yeah. sure. But when isn't it weather for sneeping? Right. Together is just what we've got to get. Now, how about some schnapping? 5,000 little fingers, and they'll be mine. All mine.